Good evening and welcome to this service of light, this service of celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. I give welcome to all of you, especially our, our friends from Knob Prairie who are joining us tonight. It's good that we can be together. And I'm not sitting at home hoping with fingers crossed that something you've set days before the premiere will show up on people's screens at home at the right time. It is indeed good to be together. I'd like to thank the Bell Choir and all of those providing special music, Tom and Donna and Mike tonight for the light of love that they bring to us. It is indeed a blessing. Remind you this evening of the candlelight portion. If you haven't noticed coming in, there are two different types of candles you might use a real candle or a battery powered one that if you've gotten one of those just the little switch on the bottom will turn it on whatever is most comfortable for you if you have a real candle when we get to that portion of the service please remember that the lighted candle stays straight up and the unlit candle dips toward it to receive the light we will take a few moments and let Silent Night play till all have received the light of Christ, and then we will sing together. If you've donated one of the poinsettias that have added their beauty to the sanctuary these past couple weeks and for this evening, we thank you very much for everyone who has enjoyed their beauty. You may take them home with you following the service, we would love for you to take them home. They are beautiful flowers, but they are delicate in their needs. So we'll let you tend for them now at home or, or give them to family and friends tonight and tomorrow. And just one special announcement to share that I have from a member of Trinity who wanted to share Merry Christmas to all of you and that those words come from Gary Butdor. I was able to talk to Gary yesterday. He's had several surgeries, been in and out of the hospital, been in and out of re rehab, and now is back at the Wellington recuperating. So he sends all of you his greetings, and hopefully we worked out everything over the phone yesterday and he'll be online and watching the service with us tonight. So let us then as the candles are lit and the prelude is played, let us feel the presence of God moving, descending to live among us here in the Christ child. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Would all who are able please rise and join me in the call to worship. On this holiest of nights, we come joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder. On this most silent night, we come our hopes and dreams joining those of Mary and Joseph. On this night of carols and candlelight, we come, our glad songs joining the choir of angels over us.
our scripture reading tonight comes from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second reading comes from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace.
Let us unite our voices for our prayer for Christmas Eve. O oh God of love, you have brought us together tonight and blessed us with your very self. Open our eyes to see the light of Christ, which glows in the darkness of a world, engulfed in apathy, pain, and loss, a world separated from you. Speak to us now that we may hear the good news of your salvation. Bring us into the wonder of your presence. Fill us with that light and carry it out with us into our lives. Amen. Let us each be in prayer. O gracious and wonderful God of light, in you there is no darkness at all. Your love has broken the boundaries and descended upon our lives this night. So bring the light of Christ upon us. Help it illuminate the paths of our lives. Lead us, as the psalmist say, in your ways. Guide us to be more loving, more compassionate, more justice ensuring for all people, more inclusive in our welcome, more like Christ. For much our world needs his presence, where wars and conflicts still wage not only on battlefields, but in towns, cities, even within our own communities and homes. Too much anger, too much violence, too much hatred. Shine the light of your love upon us again this night. Remind us once again of who we are and whose we are. Speak to us now, Lord, that we may hear your voice calling us forth to new ways to work, to live together, to love and to work together. In the name of the Christ, may his presence we celebrate Bring harmony within us and then from us to the world, so that through his presence our lives may be changed, and that through our lives his life may be glorified. Amen.
Thank you so very much, Tom and Donna. Matthew's account of the birth of the Christ child. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son. And he named him Jesus. Thanks be to God for these words of life and faith. In these moments we celebrate that gift of God through the giving of our tithes and our offerings, but still in this pandemic time we don't pass the offering plate. Many of you have seen it as you come in by a table in the back of the sanctuary and it's there when you leave. We celebrate this night the supreme gift that has been given to us in the Christ child. It causes us to examine all the gifts of God that have touched our lives and to give to God's kingdom in love and thanksgiving. Amen. Mm -hmm.
needed. <laughs> and I extend to all of you honestly my good wishes for your singing. You have really been singing tonight, and I have even stopped singing just to listen. And kudos to you who went to take the fourth Noel up there. That was grand. It was grand. I appreciated it so very much. The Christmas story as told from Luke, the second chapter, the first 14 verses. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. These are the words of the Christmas story for us this evening. Thanks be to God. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. It happens every time. Every time, I promise, it happens. All we have to do is stand at the door and ring the doorbell, and it happens. We do not need to be bearing gifts to be unwrapped or toys to be played with. We do not need to have promised any trips to the movies, to the park, or even to graders for ice cream. We need not be carrying glasses of lemonade, nor white and red imprinted bags filled with waffle fries and Grandpa Jean's chicken. <laughs> Which, by the way, for all of you who are uninformed, is the official name of Chick-fil-A <laughs> in my grandparents, grandchildren's eyes. Grandpa Jean, chicken, remember that the next time. Still, it happens every time. What waits for us beyond that door and greets us when we open it is a wonder upon wonders. There are smiles upon smiles and love upon love and the amazing, astounding gifts of the boundless, bouncing, expressive welcome of our grandchildren, J.D., Robin, and little Alex. 
There'll be hugs around our leg, legs that will make it almost impossible for us to move. Hardful body hugs will entrap us when we pick them up. They are bear hugs, but they don't squeeze life out of us. They squeeze life into us. Soon the house will reverberate with children running down the hallway, counting out one, two, three, already, set, go. This will be followed by Alex and Robin racing from one side of the family room to the other to crash into at full speed Grandma's suit. They will giggle and they laugh with each crashing into Grandma. Repeatedly, this will occur over and over and over again. It happens every time. Eventually, J.D. will take me by the hand and lead me upstairs to see his angelfish and show me his latest invention. On this, then, on this visit, his invention is a super powerful arm sleeve that you can slip on. And you punch the button on this arm sleeve and it will emit a ray that will freeze his grandparents rock solid. I can report from experience that J.D.'s freeze ray works extremely well. <laughs> that will be followed by a trip downstairs to set up train tracks or to be schooled by my eight-year-old grandson in how to play chess. I must admit, I have failed to this very day to grasp my grandson's interpretation of the rules. They certainly are not the Queen's rules. They have changed and always seem to be in J.D.'s favor. Still, all Sue and I have to do is show up, show up. And the door will open to this amazing gift that is bestowed upon us. It happens every time. Tonight, we are called to remember and to celebrate the amazing gift that is bestowed upon us. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch o'er their flocks by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of a great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. A gift greater than what Sue and I receive every time we visit our grandchildren is here for all of us tonight. All we need to do show up and receive it because this night holds a miracle that is revealed to us better through our presence here than any present will put under a tree no words need to be spoken silence well that'll do just fine just being here tonight, bathed in the warm glow of burning candles, all of that just makes the world feel different, feel better. No promises, no resolutions. By us to live better, to love better in the coming year, 
need to be made or conveyed by us this night. For the gift of this night is given freely, and it is a gift for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. It happens every time. On this night, we sense how the most unlikely and most unsignificant of places become holy. On this night, love begins to weave its way through our community, our lives, and our world. Tonight, we feel quietness begin to descend upon the earth. We feel the wonder of this gift. We can sense its presence. As a world that is so often filled with the noise of our hustling and our bustling begins to grow this night, oh, so very quiet, so very quiet. Then in our minds we can recall the words of the hymn writer whose Christmas carol proclaims for us how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. The blessings of God's heaven descend upon this earth this night, like the morning's mist and fog can descend upon the earth. Yet unlike the mist and fog, our vision is not dimmed or hampered by this blessing's arrival. Instead, our vision is clarified, intensified, made clearer by its presence. Through this blessing's presence, we are able to see the world we live in more clearly and to love God's world, world more dearly. It happens every time. Love strong and breaks is so evident on this night. It's so strong and yet it's so tender. It's like the first time you felt an infant wrap its hand around one finger. Remember that? In that moment, the infant sweetly enfolds not just your finger, but all of you. All of you. That loving, tender embrace may last for just seconds. You may have to even use your fingers to unwrap it from around yours. And though it may last only a few seconds physically, you can feel its embrace forever, forever. On this night, our eyes open wide and they glisten and they glow. As they gaze upon the dramatic displays of twinkling lights and brightly sparkling lights in our communities and on our drives here at home. Those displays of light bring smiles upon our faces as we sense the joy they seek to bring and that joy that maybe lives within that house that is displaying such light. And then our heads turn and we see we see the holes, the holes of darkness that exist in the night's landscape. Not just holes of darkness caused by the absence of Christmas lights, but holes of darkness in our own cities and world's landscape. Holes of darkness so deep and profound that no twinkling lights, no glowing Christmas tree in a window, no carolers singing can seemingly dispel. In the distant air, we hear the cries of hunger 
the cries for justice and the rumblings of violence approaching in the distance. And we pause, we freeze. It's in that moment that we sense someone take us by the hand this night and lead us up and up. Climbing upward we go. We do not know where we are headed this night. Finally, we sense we can climb no higher. We feel two arms reach out and touch and lift us like we lift our grandchildren. They enfold us and they lift us high. One hand takes hold of one of ours. And together we reach up and we touch. We touch every star in the night sky, every planet that swirls around this universe. And as our hands together lower, we behold the Earth's horizon. And we gaze upon every city, every tree, every flower, every animal, every person that has ever been given the gift of life. Then we understand that the hand holding us this night are the hands that created the heavens and the earth and all that we have seen. Hand in hand we descend together where our journey first began. And as we journey, the hand we hold on to seems to grow smaller and smaller until it's only holding on to us by one finger. We stop, we pause, and we find ourselves each this night standing before a stable and a manger. And this shall be a sign for you, Luke says. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. For on this night we are lovingly embraced by the creator of all that lives. Tonight we touch the heavens and have heard the cries of the hurting. We have heard the cries that have touched the ears of God. Cries that move the creator of all life to become one of us and show us the real way to love and to live. Tonight we feel God's unbridled love has descended upon our world and our lives and we understand better just how truly blessed each of us is. Because of this night we are able to live and love differently, more inclusively, more compassionately. It happens, it happens every time we hear the words, Behold, I bring you good tidings of a great joy which is for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord.
so very much, Mark. Thank you. In these moments, watch as the light grows. And when it has grown and enveloped the whole world, room, then we shall see.
celebrate God's gift. God's gift of the light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Thanks be to God. Amen.